Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so we are back with part three of our Marvel Cosmic Hierarchy series. And again, I have no idea how you guys are responding to the other two. <laughs> I hope it's positive. I hope I hope it's, it's interesting. Again, this is all just kind of my interpretation of this stuff. So by no standard of measurement is this like an absolute rule. But uh, in this one with our with our next installment here, right? With our, our, our really the first person we're picking up on this list, which we have at the number 10 spot is the Marquis of Death. And I know that this is gonna be one where people kind of see this a little controversial, but one of the things we talked about in the, the last hierarchy video we did is that by the time we finished the Beyonders, from that point, going forward, it wasn't necessarily a display of the power that people had because pretty much everybody on this list has what are in effect similar powers. It's really the, the way in which they use their powers and the expediency by which they were able to do the things they did. The Marquis of Death was wildly, wildly powerful, right? If you guys remember the video that we did, Beyond Omega Level, The Marquis of Death, it's one of the most popular videos we've done on the channel. This guy was wiping out universes with a wave of his hand, right? This guy was hugely powerful. The reason why I don't have the Marquis of Death higher up on this video is because the way he was defeated, that he was ultimately destroyed by Dr. Doom, despite Dr. Doom not having the same level of power as the Marquis of Death. Now, I won't spoil all that. Make sure you guys go check that video out. It's really cool. But the Marquis of Death, for the power that he displayed, the ability to manipulate the mind of Dr. Doom into leading him to believe that he'd lived years and years, decades of his life, when in reality, it had lasted nothing more than five seconds, was a huge display of telepathic power, especially when you're talking about using it on someone as powerful as Dr. Doom. Because even in his base form, while he's not necessarily a universal level threat, he is absurdly powerful, right? He's absurdly capable. When you add that to his intelligence, the fact that he and Valeria and Reed Richards kind of jockey back and forth for the number one spot as the most intelligent person in the Marvel Universe, he usually knows how to get around people who were using telepathic attacks on him. And so the fact that he couldn't really speaks volumes to the power that the Marquis of Death has. When you add, when you add in the idea that he was just hopping from one universe to the next, wiping out whole universes with a wave of his hand, when you look at what is in effect kind of his alternate reality counterpart, but the basis behind Hyde Klein Winchum still stays the same in the sense that like he just grabbed superheroes from an alternate universe and just brought him into his own in the in the real world. When you look at the, the kind of things that this guy's pulled off and how fast he was able to do them and how effortless they seemed, I think the number 10 spot is a respectable place to put him, right? He's hugely powerful. It's, it's one of these things. And that's why we're kind of chalking this up to the new you know Marvel Cosmic Hierarchy because when we did the original video, he didn't exist. Or at least I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he didn't exist. I didn't know about him, right? But knowing about him and adding him in uh, really changes the dynamic of this list because following that we go into two characters that are basically classic characters right we go into the pre-retcon molecule man and the pre-retcon beyonder now technically they're two separate things right we have a uh, molecule man at number nine and beyonder at number eight the reason why i put molecule man at number nine is because in the original secret wars 2 story it was established that he was slightly weaker than the beyonder the difference between their powers was by all standards of measurement negligible uh, at least as far as the average joe was concerned but these guys were hugely powerful right at the time that secret wars 2 was written and the time that it was created, these guys were second to the one above all, right? They were beyond the Living Tribunal. They were beyond pretty much everybody that was out there. Now, other characters have been introduced or played more prominent roles, or I'm simply just becoming aware of them. They simply weren't on this list before. And so because of that, you know, these guys, this is a respectable role. Something to understand is that there really was no limit to what these guys could do. Or at the peak of their power, these guys were walking, talking cosmic cubes. And one thing to understand is that there really is no differentiation between like a cosmic cube and an infinity gauntlet, right? I mean, I guess maybe there is insofar as you know how their powers or how their abilities originate but they can both defy the laws of physics right i mean that's entirely possible and so when you take that and you apply it to guys like the molecule man and you apply it to guys like beyonder one they're already multiversal threats right when the two of them fought at the end of secret wars 2 their battle took place in the multiverse and they were sending shockwaves throughout the multiverse right these guys can turn anything to into anything else and in fact it was well established in that story that they again they were above the living tribunal and so when you're talking about classic characters with that caliber of power where essentially nothing is beyond their abilities to to do it's insane right i mean even the beyonder himself actually killed death right he killed death in the universe and then resurrected her right it was just kind of one of those things that was done on a whim to display the level of power this guy had i would say and, and I, I continue to say that in terms of seeing like displays of abilities the beyonder did more than the molecule man did in terms of like grandiose displays of power but it was also established in that story that molecule man was by all standards of measurement equal to him in power and so he's really more of just kind of like a side-along character that 
that is equal to the Beyonder, right? He's kind of brought along to, you know, to the role of an equal by virtue of the circumstances, as opposed to like displays of abilities. We've seen Molecule Man do some cool stuff, but I don't really think we've seen him do things on the same level that the Beyonder did in Marvel Comics. But following that, right, following Molecule Man and Beyonder, we go into what's probably one of the coolest characters here. Um, and a lot of people are gonna argue with me about this. They're actually gonna see this character being put in the wrong location. I think it's the right location here. We're picking up with Protege. Now, Protege is a kid that I would, under normal circumstances, you guys are 100% right, under normal circumstances, I would put him second to the Fulcrum and the one above all, right? I mean, the guy was, was absurdly powerful. And in fact, in Marvel Comics, at the time when he reached full power, it was basically said that he was he was equal to the one above all in power. Now, technically, that's not really true. And there's a little bit of a caveat that comes along when you bring in the one above all, but he was able to overtake the Living Tribunal quite readily. Uh, but the nature of Protege's powers is that he has the power to duplicate the abilities of anybody he sees, and there's no limit to the powers he can copy, right? So that's why it started out with him copying the powers of superheroes and, and various villains that he saw around him when he was created by the Universal Church of Truth. And then you saw him uh, kind of expanding outward and then copying the abilities of cosmic entities and just rapidly rising among the ranks and just taking out everyone he saw to the point that you actually, you actually saw him encounter the Living Tribunal and there was nothing the Living Tribunal could do to stop him. Well, there was, but we'll talk about that here in, here in a minute or probably in the next video. By all standards of measurement, Protege has no limit to the power he possesses. Now, in terms of being equal to the one above all, it doesn't really work that way. And the reason why is because the one above all is basically a MacGuffin, right? The way it works in Marvel is nobody can be equal to the one above all because the one above all equates to like the writers and the editors and stuff like that, or depending on how you want to look at it, equates to Jack Kirby. It's been interpreted different ways in Marvel comics. The important thing here is that if Protege ever encountered the one above all, the one above all would just shut his powers off, right? Or just wipe him from existence and Protege wouldn't be able to bring himself back. There's any number of things. I mean, technically within the confines of how Protege's powers work, it wouldn't really make sense, right? Like how can an entity destroy an undestroyable entity, right? How does that work, right? Unstoppable object meeting an immovable force is basically what that would be. But Marvel would just kind of chalk it up and just say, yep, done because nobody surpasses the one above all. And that's essentially it. Again, you know, it's one of those things you just kind of have to roll with in comics. There's really not an absolute and hard and fast rule here when it comes to that. You just kind of take it and just go with it. And that's basically it. But the last person on our list here in this video, right? The last person in this video that I'm chalking up here is somebody that I think a lot of people sleep on in Marvel comics, right? A lot of people don't really realize how powerful this guy is, not just on a universal level, but on a multiversal level. The last person on our list in this video here is Oblivion. Now, Oblivion is wildly powerful in comics, right? More so because of what he represents as opposed to what he can do. I mean, he can do a lot of things, but Oblivion basically represents nothingness, right? Like the absence of existence is essentially what Oblivion is. And so it's well established in his early issues, or really when he kind of first starts popping up in Marvel Comics, that he was there before the multiverse existed, and he'll be there after it's gone. In effect, he will outlive everything that's out there, right? And if you're a cosmic entity that's designed to represent non-existence, then it makes sense that you cannot actually be destroyed, right? You cannot actually be, be removed from the equation. Now, I know that flies in the face of conventional wisdom, especially when you look at somebody like Mistress Death, who represents the concept of death, yet has died herself. I know it's it's it seems to kind of fly in the face of that, and it looks like it shouldn't make any sense, but for Oblivion, it does, right? And it's one of these things where Oblivion will just always kind of exist. And Marvel plays it fast and loose. In previous years, Marvel's established that Mistress Death is an aspect of Oblivion, and they've also played it that Oblivion is an aspect of Mistress Death. So it's kind of gone back and forth. But the overall gist here is that when everything out there comes to an end, right? When it's all basically dead, when the multiverse collapses and then is eventually reborn by whatever manner and whatever means that happens to be, Oblivion will remain. Some people argue he's equal to the one above all in power. I don't necessarily think so. I think in terms of, of symbolism, the, the kind of position he plays and the fact that he is sort of everlasting, then sure, I think he's equal to the one above all in that capacity. But with regards to the power he has, no, he's not equal to the one above all in that way. But Oblivion is far beyond pretty much almost, you know, pretty much everybody else on this list. Now, again, this also kind of brings in the notion of protege, right? Could protege duplicate the powers of Oblivion? And, and probably, uh, but just for the sake of simplicity, you know, I kind of kept protege a little bit below Oblivion because there's nothing to indicate that protege could survive the collapse of the multiverse unless he'd copy the powers of like the living tribunal. And even then, because the living tribunal is a representative of the multiverse itself, if the multiverse dies, the living tribunal dies with it, right? Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like destroying a house and there wouldn't be anything there, right? You know, the living tribunal is the answer to the question, what if the house could get up and walk around something, you know, one or two steps above multiversal eternity, then when the multiverse dies, the, the living tribunal dies as well. And then when the multiverse is recreated, the living tribunal comes back, right? And we saw that kind of play out indirectly in the Jim Starlin Infinity Stories when uh, the living tribunal was killed by the Beyonders. And then when the multiverse was recreated by Reed Richards, that Adam Warlock from an alternate reality became the new living tribunal.
tribunal. We saw that essentially play out in that way. Not necessarily a one-to-one -one comparison of what we're talking about here, but you know, something akin to it, right? As close as we get. But Oblivion, nonetheless, I think is probably one of the single most powerful beings within the top six of the Marvel cosmic hierarchy on a multiversal scale. It's insane how powerful he is. He doesn't quite get his respect. It's 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 sort of nuts when you look at it. But from with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Uh, in the next video that we do, it'll be the top five most powerful characters throughout the entirety of the Marvel multiverse. But if you guys are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.